Today I'm painting these tomatoes from the garden and um, I am super excited. <laughs> this is the first time I have uh, pride worthy tomatoes and um, my mom gave me the plants. She has the uh, green thumb in the family. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so here we go. I'm going to scoot in tight. So uh, while I'm getting set up here, please chat and let me know who you are and where you're watching from. Get all set up here so I can see your comments. Um, thank you so much for bearing with me last time. Um, I just had the worst internet connection and um, I really appreciate <laughs> your being so gracious about it. So here we go. Oh. Okay, there we go. So now I've got it all pulled up so I can see your chats. And I am going to get to work. So for anyone who hasn't heard about it yet, I am doing a... Um, live announcement tomorrow on Facebook, which is something I haven't ever tried before. Um, I like this interesting tomato here. Let's see what I can do with that. Oh, and I love the smell of tomatoes. They smell so good here. Hmm. see. So the setup, it's always one of the things that takes the most time. A good setup makes the whole rest of the painting work out nicely. Now it has kind of this U shape from my perspective. I feel like it needs a little. Yep, there we go. Everything's kind of overlapping. I can see the interesting bits of some of these tomatoes. So, good morning and welcome. Thanks for joining me. And um, please leave a chat and let me know where you're watching from. So, I've mentioned before, I always feel like I'm coming right back to paint some more, and, um, and so I, uh, used to get really down on myself for not scraping my palette, but, um, now I just know it's part of the process. <laughs> I, uh, I start an end, I, I started painting with the palette scraping rather than ending it that way. And so this is going to be a very limited palette painting. Um, let's see, what would be best? I'm just going to get a couple little soft brushes out and A bunch of medium and I'm just gonna map it in right there. Cars, good morning. Thank you so much for being so gracious <laughs> the other day with my internet uh, and my uh, <laughs> my, my uh, video cutting out. Um, my husband thought maybe it was uh, the router needing to be restarted and so 
my fingers are crossed. Um, uh, we'll see. I'm also, I'm, I'm pretty far from the router. I moved to a new spot in the studio that has a lot of natural light. It's really pleasant, but it's also further from the router, so. Just, uh, fingers crossed. Natural light is <laughs> really nice. You know, I, um, I'm going to do like a little vignette. Um, I'm just going to put my stuff in the middle and let it kind of fade off on the sides. I'm going to get these guys mapped in and then I'm going to wipe it back off and, um, and get a little bit of value on this canvas. So, um, <laughs> cars, uh, these tomatoes are, uh, my mom gave me these little plants and I'm just, I'm so excited. <laughs> I've grown, um, little teeny tomatoes before and I've had them come back and volunteer the next year which is really fun but I have never had a steak tomato grow in my yard before and now I have three plants with gorgeous tomatoes and um, oh, so nice but you know, she gave me the little babies and um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, that's just really fun. Um, I actually had enough tomatoes. I actually, I got to give a couple back, um, <laughs> which, uh, I don't know, that's exciting. I can see why, why people really enjoy growing a bunch of the crop and then, and then sharing it. It's, uh, An amazing amazing feeling so I'm just kind of mapping in and as always my perspective since you're looking at it with the camera from over here and I'm looking at this angle it's going to be completely different um, and you are welcome to grab a brush and or a pencil and paint along um, or to just grab some popcorn and watch. Okay. And this one little guy over here. There's some nice variety in the um, in the colors. And let's see. If I'm just going for a black in, I I'm not trying to get accurate colors here, but uh, I'm going to try to, just because I want some distinction here, I'm going to get a little bit closer. So this is my cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and cadmium yellow, and I'm still using the colors out of those little sample packets. Um, which is super cool. I've, uh, I've added a couple more colors, so I have my normal palette now. And let's see. And this is part of what I find so beautiful about tomatoes. It's just that the wild stems right next to the smooth tomatoes. It's really lovely. And this guy, something like that. Okay, so this is where, it, this is, this is really cool. I think this will end up being kind of focal. The angles here are really neat and beautiful. 
and uh, just a little bit here. Okay, so I'm curious if uh, I'm going to wipe this down in a second, and I'm just really curious sometimes um, when I've done that in person studio demos, people just kind of gasp, like, What are you doing to the painting? <laughs> um, but uh, I, I'm curious if that's something that you also do as part of your process. And I don't do it every time, but uh, it is really satisfying to do it sometimes. Okay, here we go. And I kind of, oh, that's really neat. The, um, the green right here is just him going right along the edge of the tomato. That's really beautiful. And one more. more. Okay. So fun, fun, fun. <laughs> the black and stage, I think, is my favorite part of the painting process. And uh, I don't know if you if you love that part too. I think everybody who makes art has a different favorite part of the process. I'm going to really get rid of this part since that was, uh, that was moving. And then the rest of it. I'm just wiping it down a little bit. This medium is pretty, uh, well, very fast drying, and also the paint is pretty thin. And I want a lot more um, color right underneath. So, I'm going to put in a little bit of red underneath and then go over it with the blue for kind of a nice contrast. And I'm going to make it a little bit softer than, um, than the red here. I want to soften this up. I want it to be distinct from that, this area. Okay, here we go. And uh, I have the camera out pretty far. Let me know if you want me to zoom in a little bit more. Just want a nice underpainting color to play with. And I don't mind going over the lines, but I'm trying to add a little bit of information as I go and correct the drawing. And Chris, if you are there, um, <laughs> thank you for the suggestion. So, let's see. something 
pretty satisfying about laying down an underpainting where I know that its purpose is just to support the rest of the painting and that it, um, you know, most of it won't show. Um, I was laying down a little bit of groundwork here. And, A much bigger pile of paint. And because I'm using medium that makes it dry faster, I'm trying to uh, yeah, grab paint off of the middle of my palette that's already been mixed with the medium uh, rather than out here just to uh, you know, to save paint. Okay, I'll add a little bit of value in here for, um, and I'm wiping it off, so it's just kind of staining the the canvas with a little bit darker paint. But I'll let this dry for a minute longer before I wipe it off. Get some of that dark shadow in right there. And right over here. And these tomatoes, they have a nice rhythm to them with you know, the larger tomatoes and then get smaller and smaller that direction. Uh, Okay, I've got a bunch more paints. I'm using up these little samples. Since they, uh, you know, they're in packets, so they don't have caps. <laughs> and uh, we get the use out of them. There we go. That's uh, that's the stuff, and like I said, I don't remember actually giving the sample what the situation was. If I uh, if I was just curious about their paints or um, or what that was, um, there we go. With a little bit more of this brown. Okay. And so this is, um, once again, this is a loose canvas uh, that I, I got the canvas on a roll, which is almost out, so I have some <laughs> decision making to do and um, I trim it down to the size I want and leave about an inch around the sides for um, taping and then you know when I really get a successful painting then I mount it and um, and it's ready to frame up but um, I really like the hard surface of working on a canvas that's on a board. And this is just gator board, so it's super light. And so last weekend, they took something like this with me when I went plein air painting. And, um, and it's just so light for, <laughs> for hiking. Uh, OK, 
Yeah, painter painting, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of exercise. And so I'm having a little bit of, <laughs> you know, something that's not quite so heavy. It's, it's nice. It really did make me realize why so many of the planar painters are so fit. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, hiking into beautiful places and then um, carrying a bunch of painting equipment with, that really is great exercise. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of reverse this whole thing. And let's see. I'll start with a little layer of tomato color and now I'm really looking more precisely at um, you know what this tomato color is it's kind of fun being right next to it I can hold my brush up and um, and be pretty specific about it so This is where, you know, when I, when I hold my brush up and I see that, um, you know, my cadmium red mix is more orange and less blue than the tomato. And this is really kind of a big decision for me of whether to try to um, cool it down with a blue or with my alizarin crimson because both are cooler and if i go with my blue i feel more like i've made a decision to do kind of a muted palette or muted muted colors on my painting and if i go with the alizarin crimson i feel like i've you know that's sort of a decision to have a really uh vibrant painting and um and I love both those things, so it's it's uh, you know it takes a lot of thought to make that decision. Um, and so I'm going to move to working without any medium. Uh, pretty quickly. I'm going to get an initial coat in here though with um, with using medium and kind of going over some of these lines right here. And I left the dirt on there. I just thought that was fun. I just grabbed these um, out of the garden like 10 minutes ago. So there's this nice um, reflection on this tomato from this one where it's more vibrant. And then over here, the highlights. Um, I have my windows open right there for some natural light. And um, so... I'm going to do the color that's underneath and then come back for highlights later. And So this guy's going to have a lot of orange, let's see, I'm just going to take that same mix, warm it up a little bit with yellow. And a little bit more, 
And I'm aiming for the color that's right here, closest to me. And uh, and this is just part of, you know, I'm choosing what's most important to me and doing that first so the other pieces can work with that. So I would love to know what you are up to this weekend, if you um, have weekend plans that are <laughs> different from your weekday plans, um, or if you're making art, or uh, catching up on movies, or working in the garden. Um, here we go. Well, this is a little bright, but I haven't added any white to any of these mixes yet. This one back here, it's it's a lot darker, it's in shadow. And excuse me, I'm gonna jiggle the camera here. So this is a uh, quinacridone rose. It's um, a little bit cooler uh, than the Illusion Crimson I've been using. And I used to use this on my palette instead of the Illusion and um, It has a nice quality that I've been kind of missing recently. And then, and then I ran into this old tube. I was searching through my, my old paints when I kind of moved my studio around. And uh, so it's just kind of the very end of a tube, but it'll, uh, it'll help me decide what I want. <laughs> and my canvas going forward. Or on my on my palette, excuse me. And so this is one of those fun um, here. It wants to move in. There we go. Oh, it's correcting the drawing. And I'm being careful to uh, cool this down, um, but not to, I'm avoiding the yellow. I don't want it to turn brown.
the, um, the cadmium red, it has a lot of orange in it, and so it can, I'm, I'm being cautious about how I mix these three colors. Um, and, and then the top half is very orange. but mix separate. Um, yeah, that might have gone a little over. Okay. We have some soft edges in here. And there we go. I like that shape better. Okay. And then this little guy in the back is so bright. And this guy over here, a little bit the same, and much more orange. And so, yeah, let me know if you are a gardener, if you're a gardener like me that uh, does not have a green thumb, <laughs> gardens on the, uh, you know, I, I, I love having things grow, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I have no great thumb. Or if you're one of those people like my mom that could just grow anything, seems like she's always had beautiful flowers and vegetables. Okay. And then this color here, oh, it's wonderful. That, yeah, really wonderful. It's, you know, it's sort of leaning towards green. And it's almost like the colors of the Honeycrisp apple here. And we'll dip into white for the first time here. And let's see, that's a nice bright green. I'm going to use my cerulean blue to mix that. It's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting color. The orange, the orangey red right next to that green are kind of, um, it's like we're having a little visual party here. And let's see, the cerulean blue um, is more opaque than my yellow. I just uh, when I mix with it, it, um, just a little bit goes really far. Whereas with the yellow, it takes a lot more paint. So So much like a honey crisp apple, it's 
So I wonder if um, farmers, <laughs> when you get a tomato plant you're really excited about, if you uh, keep the seeds, use them again the next year. Mm -hmm. So kind of tempted to give that a shot here. And, and then it kind of morphs down into an orange down here. And, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Try and get that little guy in the back. And it's kind of the same orange on the bottom, kind of more of a green on the top, but more of a dull green. Dip into my ultramarine here. And there we go. And and then get into that orange. So pale. Pale but warm. Yes. And <laughs> and that whole warm and cool thing. Uh, if you missed the day I was talking about why an, a red could be more or less warm and you want to hear more about, you know, my, my way of thinking about it, just let me know. Um, but there we go. Start with this and see where it goes. And Go. I think we need some background here. A little bit of a shadow in here. And Okay, it's definitely time for some background. This guy. This guy needs to take up more space.
him. Let's see. So I'm a little torn about what color to do for the background. If I should do more of a green to just, uh, you know, be completely complimentary or um, go for what's really there. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of blue and green and then some brown in the foreground and just go from there. Here we go. Sorry about this noise, it's like nails on your chalkboard. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to mix a nice dull green for this. I'm telling I'm completely torn. I think I'm actually going to do what I see first and adjust as needed. And let's see, where does that need to go? Like that. And I'm going for kind of a dull color, so um, or a slightly more subtle color than what I've got. And. So I started with cerulean, and since it seemed like it needed to be more subtle, I um, was going for something in the same color range with ultramarine and yellow. Um, but obviously that wouldn't be as uh, strong of a color. And now I'm just Kind of doing warmer, cooler, lighter, darker. And a little cooler. And I'm gonna start with that and see where it goes.
<laughs> That's fun, right? <laughs> Glows. Okay. <laughs> wow, wow. That really does glow. Okay. I, uh... So I have a lot of fun doing um, abstract paintings also that are just like colors and textures and I am definitely going to be playing with this color combination. This is just wild. I don't know about from where you're sitting, but from here, my eyes are just vibrating. hilarious. Bring it up a teeny bit for the background. And uh, I need to restock my ultramarine here. Look at the shadows. So <laughs> that was, uh, if that surprised you to having that color kind of uh, just really vibrating there, <laughs> let me know. That was, uh, that was pretty wild. And uh, for those of you who have just joined, welcome. Um, let me know who you are and where you're watching from. And um, yeah, welcome to the studio. And if you haven't heard yet, I'm doing um, my first ever, uh, well, if it works out, it'll be a monthly giveaway that I'm going to be announcing on Facebook. Um, and um, so I'll do the announcement tomorrow. Um, and um, like how, how people can um can sign up or uh enter the drawing so uh just let me know if that's something you want more info about uh, kind of nervous about it since i've never <laughs> i've given away artwork before uh but just in my newsletter in the past i've never i've done it on facebook before and for some reason that's kind of scary Okay, and then these are tomatoes from the garden, and okay, excuse me, I'm going to jiggle the camera again and get out some uh, 
that's my color here. Totally to the end of this one. Yeah. Got a couple tricks for getting every bit of paint out. I'll do that later. <laughs> So this is a brand that um, I was testing out because um, an artist that I, um, who was my mentor last year uses this, um, but I just can't get used to the um, consistency of it. It's uh, kind of, I don't know, it just has a very different consistency than what I'm used to. And, um, and so I, um, I have, I have not been using it. Obviously it's kind of a brand new little, um, tube of paint, but I didn't want to shop for more paint when I obviously have a whole tube of that color right here. So. <laughs> So I am going to give it a real try and see how it goes. Chris, yes, welcome. Thank you for the suggestion. So um, these are tomatoes from the garden. And I was thinking about our conversation. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, from here, the these are almost vibrating like complementary colors, and um, it just was a real shock to my eye. It <laughs> made me laugh, and um, I'm not sure if that translates over the screen, but um, yeah, some color combinations just uh, um, you know they they make the <laughs> your they make your eyes actually kind of um the cells kind of switch on and off really fast it's it's really funny i, I feel like it almost did that um but uh yeah and it is funny because it, it really is a blue it's not it's not a green and these really are red and not orange, so um, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> it's just such a strong distinction there, but uh, that will change as the painting goes on, and um, be interesting to see what how it turns out. And I'm not sure if you heard my internal struggle with <laughs> whether to do a blue um, to kind of honor what I'm looking at here or to um, do some more outdoorsy on the plant kind of colors. And uh, so I, I decided to... Uh, Give the blue a shot first, and if it doesn't work out, we'll change it. 
um, there's kind of this, uh, you know, there's the dark part of the shadow and then there's this lighter extension of the shadow right next to it. Put that in there. get rid of more of this red. I, I like some of it poking through, but um, a lot less than what's here now. And I'm actually liking this paint quite a bit more now. I um, It's a, it's a nice consistency. <laughs> I know that the consistency really bothered me before, so this is interesting. It's nice, nice to find out that it's, uh, that it's going to work for me. And back here, I can't see the shadows from where I'm at. And then this tomato really needs to keep going up, up, up. I love their kind of irregular shapes here. Um, yeah, I'm just playing with the edges and... Uh, And okay, I think it's time for here. I'll wipe out a little bit more of this. That's a, a lot for my eyes. and put some stem in here that stem still is super pretty Let's see if I can Let's see, I'm gonna get the shadow in here first so I'm not like painting around the stem right from the get-go Let the tomatoes sit down a little bit more. Some nice green for this stem. Let's see. So I want it to be solidly green and not brown. It's a subtle green 
but um, get the right quality to the color. And let's see. And I think um, you can get better results with a strong green with some red mixed in. And I just do this with my greens. I don't do it when I'm trying to mix purple or orange, but um, for whatever reason, I find that um, sometimes the red can um, make the green more subtle in a way that is more pleasing to me than using ultramarine would be. And let's start there. And let's see here. Let's darken that up. Uh -huh. I don't have any white here, so it's just my yellow that's making it so light. And so these overlap depending on how much I move around. There's just a teeny bit of tomato showing underneath this curve. I want to make sure that stays there. I think that's really lovely. And, and this is kind of on the shadow side of the stock here. And I'll come back over this with tomato. And it's really how all these things overlap that I think is beautiful right here. And then these little petals and grab out a smaller brush for that. Just get it to start in the right spot. And okay. So this I'm gonna pull get a little bit lighter have some distinction between that back um, stock and the front one. And lighten it up with the white. Also, um, I was thinking about cooling it off a little bit, but white can really cool a color off. And so we'll just see what happens with just the white first. And then, there we go. Cool. And 
here. I'm really um, adding a lot of the quinacridone red and the ultramarine and um, making this a very subtle green back here. Um, so that kind of splits off right there. shift in the green again so it can so it's not uniform going back and you know there's so much subtlety I went to kind of capture that yeah. Yeah. and Just the very edge of that shows there. Okay, and now for a little bit of dimensionality here. Make this much greener. And um, I think greens allow so much like playing with the color and still being um green um and i think this is the right value family and then probably gonna have to darken up around this to really get some shadow happening But yeah, I mean, we have so much flexibility with how to mix green and still have it read as green. It can be practically orange. Um, it can be chartreuse. <laughs> it can be almost blue. And, uh, you know, still it will read as green. I, I think that's, that's neat. It means there's so much room to play. So let me know what you are up to today. Um, if, uh, you know, I'm curious, I know all of us are, uh, you know, all of us have different lives <laughs> and everything for some people. Saturday is uh, just another day and some people go out and do special things. But, uh, Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there is, uh, I don't know. There. I am, uh, I'm very lucky to live in a place where, um, 
I can go to the state park and um, it's probably not good for the park, but I can go there and not run into any other people. And uh, I just got my park pass yesterday, so um, we went out last week and um, to uh, check out all the birds and there were hundreds of um, pelicans and a number of herons and um, and a bunch of other birds that I, I did not know what kind they were. <laughs> it was really wonderful and beautiful. A little bit of dimension there. This part here, I really find charming that how this one little bit hangs over. I'm not sure if you can actually see it from your vantage point, but um, it's really pretty. And let's see, this guy needs some little petals before I get any further. So this part kind of a nice and dark. Little details can really bring a painting together, I think. Where it kind of feels um, like very abstract, and then you get the right detail in, and all of a sudden it's plain as day. We get some of that wild quality here. I'll carve back in with the red.
we've got. So this is kind of my my dark dark that I have. Um, because I uh, I don't have black on my palette right now, so ultramarine and um, quinacrid. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, quinacridone bros are. Um, that's my darkest mixture I can make. I've added black back in a few times um, for little little areas and um, it is kind of fun it's such a strong color um, but I try to keep it off my palette unless uh, unless there's a really good reason to put it on You know, there are some artists that I, I really like that um, you know black is one of their staple colors. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I find it's easy to get in trouble with having black with it accidentally or you know just wanting to mix in with other colors and it really has a lot of its own personality. You can tell I'm not concentrating really hard here. <laughs> and uh, let's see. But let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, and uh, I'm concentrating really hard, so I'm not being as chatty, but. Um, if you have any comments are always welcome and your questions. Darkening up this area back here. Dark shadow. And shadow under this tomato. Be a lot darker.
There's this uh, kind of wrinkle in the uh, paper towel right there. Okay, put some more of these petals in here. So I'm going to darken this area so it can drop back a little bit. this forward a little bit. get a couple more petals and then drop this uh, cloth back. Hello, the Florida blue background <laughs> in Stubbs image. That's a very orange. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, um, the color I had them next to before was, um, was just extremely similar to the tomatoes and, uh, it wasn't given him much room to stand out. <laughs> um, and I think if I move the color of the um, background a little bit greener, they will, um, the color will shift again. Fun to experiment with. There's um, the tomatoes there. They need a little bit of subtlety. Let's get some initial highlights in here. And 
turn some of these little highlights down a little bit, but just kind of get them in here and see where we're at. And then this one, kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah. Highlight is hiding right on the edge from what I can see. And I'll really tone down this background. It's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, and we go. I'm just gonna mix with this. Make a nice dull green. And Doing a little experimentation here and just kind of see where this goes. So you can see the yellows mixing in with the blue I have back there a little bit. And I kind of look like the look of having a variety of color back there. Um, that's not gonna happen. But, but also, uh, I like toning down the blue. <laughs> there we go. Well, so um, if I haven't mentioned it, please like if you like. Um, if you want to get the notification about my. Um, the giveaway I will be announcing on Sunday, um, just let me know and um, I'll get that for you.
Getting rid of the red back there really <laughs> feels good. Let's see. Wouldn't mind if the foreground is a little bit darker. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah, the highlights, oh my gosh, they make a lot of difference. Um, and uh, it's funny, without the highlights and the shadows, it's just kind of a flat plane. It's funny how sometimes the stuff that happens in the last couple minutes of a painting is, um, you know, it feels more significant than what happened, you know, the first hour of a painting. But, uh, yeah. And I'll have to compensate for the fact that the color changed with the shadows. Um, you know, because these are shadows on blue. Um, brighten them up. And green them up. Um, These are some noisy tomatoes, that's for sure. <laughs> Woo! Very bright. Um, okay. I like to care some of these edges here. I want to have some control over which edges they uh, really pop out. And <laughs> so Chris asks if I see the finished painting uh, in my mind before I get started and um, sometimes yes and sometimes no and um, in this case I just wanted to kind of experiment and see where the painting went and so I really started with no expectations or um, you know vision of how this would go um, and you know I just kind of trust the process that um, you know something interesting would happen and um, and so but sometimes I do have a very clear vision um, but not today <laughs> that's for sure uh, and um, like with my larger paintings, especially I'll do some groundwork first um, of, you know, some smaller studies and 
kind of thinking through what plays off of what is it's one thing to change a background color when it's um you know just something small like this but um you know this paint is staying dry for me so i can do a lot of changing um and um or i mean it's it's staying wet and so um that makes things like this possible where you can move things around and um and like more layers I think makes it more lovely uh, so there's a little bit more um, you know there's more variety there's more things going on um, where I think when the paint is drying in between um, a lot of ex exploration it doesn't really add um you know the the way i did at least um playing and experimenting it doesn't add um complexity and adds work <laughs> um, so. so working small can be really freeing that way um So I'm just deciding um, what edges I want uh, to be hard edges and what edges to be soft edges. And um, I've heard different theories about how to choose those things and, um, and um, you know, something interesting to think about is that, like, if you were looking at all of these tomatoes, only the part that your eye would be seeing, only the part that you're really staring at would be in focus and everything else would be out of focus. Um, but the same thing happens when you're looking at a painting, only the part that you're looking at is in focus. Um, and so it's interesting how like, do you decide to have a narrow focus for the viewer um, so that they're kind of seeing what they would see in one instant? Or do you decide to let the viewer um, kind of make their own choice about that and let their arm roam and have uh, lots of areas of um, focus? Um, I don't know. So, and some artists, obviously, their entire paintings are crystal clear, and then other artists, you can see that they um, they really do have a very narrow focus, and everything else is kind of blurred out. And um, I just think it's neat to be intentional about that. Of uh, you know what what do I want to say here? What's, you know, do I, do I want some part to be more important than the other parts? Well, since it's noon already, I will um, say goodbye for now. I'll, um, I'll record the rest of this uh, demo and do like a little uh, time lapse thingy so you can see how it turned out and how the rest of the process goes. I think I'm going to change the background colors more, uh, kind of lay this plane down. 
um, and really give these tomatoes more um, dimension. There we go. With uh, yeah, a couple value shifts here. You know, next time I might do the opposite where instead of starting it um, uh, with you guys and then finishing later, I might um, start one and then do the finishing part with you guys. So let me know if that sounds like it'd be fun or, um, you know, whether, whether seeing the beginning or the end is more interesting or if it's all kind of the same. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Paying a little bit more attention to my warm reds and my cool reds here. There's, um, there's a real temperature shift across every one of these tomatoes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'll uh, I will do that. I'll I'll organize next time so it's the end of a painting. Um cool. Well, thanks so much for joining. Um if you have any other uh questions or comments, um please let me know. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Okay, well, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining. Oh, and uh, tomorrow, if you're free at 5 o'clock um, Midwestern time, Central time, um, join me on Facebook to find out and, uh, and enter the drawing for a giveaway.